Hello, and welcome to the last of the 15 films about the standard level organic topic. Here we're going to be looking at things called nucleophilic substitution reactions, and if you haven't watched the film that goes before this, which is about reaction mechanisms, then this is going to be quite difficult for you, because I'm going to take it for granted that you've understood how reaction mechanisms work to some extent. Okay, so in this film, hopefully by the end of it, you'll know what we make when a halogenoalkane reacts with hydroxide ions. And you'll know that that's called a nucleophilic substitution reaction and that will produce alcohols. Okay, and you'll understand the difference between two different types of mechanism called SN1 and SN2. Now, in a substitution reaction of the type that we're talking about here, we're taking a halogenoalkane, so that is an alkane with a halogen attached, as we've discussed, and we're swapping it for an OH group. So hydroxide ions come along and they make this new bond here, right? So in that case it's that bond, and in that case it's that bond, and we're breaking the bond between the carbon and the halogen, okay? So in doing so, we swap our hydroxide ion for a halide ion. Okay? Now remember, these are kind of reaction equations. They don't tell us how this happens, right? So when we're telling the story of what goes on, in other words, when we're telling the story of how our halogenoalkane is going to turn into an alcohol and the halide ion, right? what we've got to do is we've got to use a mechanism to tell that story. Right? So we're going to have to talk about curly arrows, we're going to talk about the order in which bonds are made and broken and so on and so forth. So let's start off with the first kind of story, and this is called an SN2 mechanism. Now, SN2 mechanisms happen with primary halides. So let's draw ourselves a primary halide. Okay? And remember that in a primary halide, like chloromethane, we've got a slightly positive carbon atom because the chlorine pulled away the electrons from it. We need a nucleophile here, like a hydroxide ion. Okay? And remember, this negative charge basically represents a pair of electrons. The first thing that happens here both of these molecules are involved in the first step. So in our cartoon, if you like, this is the first slide of the cartoon. And what happens first, remember we're going to make a bond between the carbon and the oxygen, and this bond is going to break. And in actual fact, this all happens at the same time. How do we show this bond being made? Well, we put the pair of electrons into that space, because a bond is a pair of electrons. However, this carbon is now thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going, to, I'm going to have five bonds here, so this bond is going to have to break. So we're going to show that pair of electrons moving out towards this partially charged chlorine atom. We now draw something in our kind of second part, or second scene, if you like, something called a transition state. Now, this is a very fleeting moment in time. And this is going to be negatively charged, because remember we took something that was neutral and something negative, so overall it's going to have a negative charge. We're going to have a carbon here that has got the three bonds to the hydrogen atoms, which were undisturbed. And we're going to kind of have a dotted bond here to show this new bond that is forming between the O and the carbon, and a dotted bond here to show the bond that is breaking. Okay, so this is our transition state, right? It's a short-lived thing. Carbon can never really have five bonds, but we're kind of passing through this on our way to our products. And remember, if these electrons have gone to the chlorine atom, then that bond is going to break, and what this transition state is now going to turn into is our alcohol, because we've got that new bond there. Let me just put that new bond in green, okay? And maybe I'll just highlight this bond that was breaking in red, okay? Um, what else have we got attached here? Well, still the three hydrogens. Okay, so there's our alcohol, and this explains why we've now got a chloride ion, because this chlorine took the electrons from the bond, broke that bond, and ended up with the electrons, so it's negatively charged. Okay, so this mechanism kind of takes place almost, if you like, in two steps. In fact, some people show this curly arrow in the transition state, and that's an option. You can, instead of drawing it here, right, so instead of having this curly arrow here, you could just show it there, okay? But basically, what we're saying here is that as this bond here forms, this bond here is going to break, okay? And we're going to form our products. And that's a very different story to what we see if we use tertiary halides. Now, if I drew myself a tertiary halide, let's say maybe 
um, we could have methyl propane with a chlorine atom attached. Now this is going to react in a very different way. It's hard for the nucleophile to get in here because of these great big groups. So the first thing that happens is that the chlorine, which is pulling the electrons over to itself, remember the red bond on the previous diagram was the one that was going to break, so let's make it red again. We're going to show this bond breaking first. So that bond can break without any involvement of the hydroxide ion. So that's why we're saying there's only one molecule involved at first, and it's called SN1. What we're going to form here is a what is called a carbocation. It's called a carbocation because it's got a carbon with a positive charge. We've now kicked out the chloride ion, and now, oops, that should be a CH3, and that should be a CH3, and that should be a CH3, and now this nucleophile can use its pair of electrons to form a new bond with this positive charge. Notice now we've got a negative thing and a positive thing coming together, so these two things overall are going to make a neutral thing, and we're left with our chloride ion. So now this mechanism is really happening in two stages, right? Because first of all this molecule broke its bond and then the nucleophile came along and that's very different to what happened before because remember as the new bond was formed the old bond was breaking okay so let's just see here what we're going to form well we're going to have the OH we're going to have a new bond here to our carbon atom which has got three CH3 groups so I'm just going to represent that like that this time and we've got a chloride ion Okay, but two very different ways of getting to our products. And if we want to try and understand why that is, well, we've two different ways of really understanding this. These groups here that the nucleophile is trying to kind of get itself in between to attack this carbon atom, if they're very small, as they are in a primary halide, then it's easy for the nucleophile to get in there and it can start making its bond while this one is breaking. However, if these are very big, like we said on the previous slide, that's going to stop the nucleophile getting in there, so perhaps this bond will break first. Another way of thinking of this is that if you have quite big groups on here, like CH3s, they are what are called electron, electron donating groups, and they will push electrons in towards this carbon. So when you're making your carbocation, this positively charged carbon thing, that's more likely to form if you've got groups around here which are able to donate electrons to it because they'll stabilize that positive charge okay you don't have to be able to explain why one molecule will do one thing and one molecule will do the other but you do need to know that primary halogenoalkanes will use an SN2 mechanism while the tertiary ones will use an SN1 what about secondary halides well they'll do one or the other okay and that's good enough to know Right, just before we finish, can I just urge you to try and understand what is going on in these mechanisms. If you didn't really fully understand what was going on in the previous film, I'd suggest you watch it again so that you can understand why I was drawing the curly arrows that I was in this film. Okay, as usual, if you've got any questions, and I would suggest that maybe this is where most of the questions will come in, because it's the hardest thing in the SL organic topic, I would say, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube. But hopefully, what you feel you can now do is you can describe the reaction of halogenoalkanes with hydroxide ions to make alcohols in terms of two different mechanisms called SN1 and SN2.